Gavin Lang uh, returning back. Uh, very good performance by uh, Glenn Free Byrne for Anton Galino and uh, Gavin Lang in the sulky this time. Uh, got the job done. She's uh, pretty professional, just keeps uh, racing well and uh, gives uh, gives her all each time she goes around. Yeah, no, you've got to love her. She's um, always been, um, <clears throat> you know, up there as a juvenile and through her early years she was not too far behind the best of her, her age and, yeah, she's... Uh, she come back good this time with a feel of her. Yeah, no, she's just uh, just very professional, really. You just can't fold her. She just puts her head down and uh, gets out there and gets the job done. Yeah, no, exactly right. Um, I ran second on her in the Breeders' Crown, and I, uh, yeah, I, if I had the race again, I might have uh, even won the race. But uh, but she ran second, and uh, she's always performed very well. And and that's the beauty of her is that she's such a perfect mannered horse that. Um, she keeps getting the job done, and when they're like this, they you have them for a long time. You know, they're not the flashiest of horses, but they've just got the good manners. And, I mean, tonight she led, but she's probably, uh, you know, more dangerous when she uh, has a trail and uses her speed at the finish. But uh, tonight we sort of got it fairly cheap, so I was happy to stay in the lead. Getting some uh, nice drives from, uh, from, from, from Pat Driscoll and, and Anton Galino stable, and certainly... Uh, the future, I know uh, you've had a great love of trotters for uh, pretty much all uh, through your lifestyle and, and um, certainly uh, going forward, uh, certainly uh, breeding beautiful horses and going to have a lot of fun over the uh, upcoming uh, years. Oh, no doubt about that. Um, Yabby Farms, as they trade as um, Pat Driscoll, they've, they've injected so much money into firstly purchasing a property and then building a state-of-the-art complex. Uh, they've got a great band of broodmares. Um, not only from Australia, but uh, New Zealand, Europe, America, you name it. And, uh, yeah, one day they're uh, going to produce a super horse, something that we're not... Uh, I mean, we've had our Mary's Idols and that and what have you, but we haven't had an out-and-out -out, uh, superstar for a long time. But uh, I'm sure that uh, the breed that they're uh, going to have going forward, um, yeah, they're going to produce one one day. and. And deservedly so, because, like I say, the money that they're putting in the industry, uh, the trotters, uh, I've always said that um, it'll be a trotter that'll put uh, Australia on the world map as far as trotting goes. So uh, they're the ones that maybe will do it. Yeah, look, uh, we're very fortunate in Australia, I mean, especially in the last uh, probably seven to ten years now, we've seen the pacing breed just continue to improve now, the trotters, as you said, from the work that Pat's done, and you, you can just see uh, both in the pacing and trotting division, it still might be a few years away, but we're not far off from uh, having that world champion dominant horse uh, in both categories. No, nah, no doubt about that. Um, you know, <coughs> Bob Cameron, who was... Uh, one of the greatest horsemen New Zealand's ever pr produced. Uh, he spent uh, two or three years here, and uh, when he went back home, uh, it was his opinion that uh, Australia, and especially here in Victoria, he said that, uh, you know, that pound for pound, we had as many great horsemen, drivers, trainers, and, and horses uh, that, it, that he'd ever seen. So uh, to come from a man like him... Um, yeah, I took that on board and thought, well, uh, you know, I've always been a little bit biased, I suppose, um, that I've thought that. But to come from a man like him, uh, yes, uh, the industry's uh, heading the right way. Heading up to Shepparton and Cup tomorrow night? Uh, yeah, two drives for Anton tomorrow night, Vincennes and uh, uh, Little Mare in the last. Um, um, the only two drives I got, so uh, I'll be able to enjoy the night because there's some great horses running and... Uh, the weather's generally first class, so yeah, it should be good. All right, are you going to come home with two winners, though? Uh, I've got two good chances, I think. Um, Vincennes, I know he's, his figure form isn't uh, great on paper, but he's uh, been racing better than that. Verbier, she's had two runs back from a long spell. Uh, come up with barrier seven, which isn't ideal, but uh, she's got the good manners too. So uh, with, uh, she, I mean, she made a break last start, but... I think that was a little bit out of uh, character for her. So, uh, yeah, uh, hopefully she does it right and she won't be too far away either. Bridey Valentine earlier on, uh, assessment? Uh, she's probably found the level here in Victoria. Um, <clears throat> the owners um, and Clayton, they've decided that maybe this is her last term of racing 
before going to the breeding barn. So we're going to send her on to Sydney for uh, a little while. And the mile racing just might suit her because one thing that she always is, is very strong at the finish. And the mile, the mile racing up there just might be ideal for her. So uh, she'll go up there and, um, yeah, finish her career there. And hopefully she sort of, I don't know, won about 80,000. So if she can, she can get close to 100, it's uh, a feather in her cap. So... Yeah, no, she's uh, certainly done a great job. Good on you, Gav. Uh, well done.